Hi, my name is Jeff Blake, and I um, I am a Capricorn. We were like in the dressing room or something, and I was just like, hey, I was thinking about starting an improv group. Um, would you be interested? And he was like, I was about to ask you the same thing, which is kind of cool. Um, I guess if this is a comic frenzy little documentary, then I am one of the founders of Comic Frenzy. I was at BYU-Idaho. I was studying English at the time. Uh, I had done improv when I was in high school. So when I heard that some people were starting an improv group, I was really excited to join. Well, I'm Christian Busey, and I was a part of the very first team of Comic Frenzy. Although I wasn't one of the performers, I was the voice. I love to spaz out and play pranks and get in trouble and be a weirdo all the time. Um, that was just a regular part of my life. We didn't know what we were doing and we didn't know what we had. So much so that, I mean, we, we were in threat of being shut down from the beginning. It was interesting at the beginning, to say the least. Me having never done improv before, yes, I was in theater and did some comedy um, sketches, but not improv. The fact that we were all there, we were all at the very beginning of our collegiate careers when this whole thing started, so we were there all together for that whole time is, is interesting to me, the way that worked out. I don't think all of us ever thought that it was going to last as long as it did. I really didn't. I thought after all of us, all the core people, you know, like onesie twosies you're okay with, but then you want you to leave like the John and the Jeff and some of these that just, you know, the brands and stuff that just kind of put a lot of passion into it, James's, um, that it wasn't going to survive. When I joined the team, the team was kind of still searching for its identity and still trying to find out what it was about. Um, and it was completely student run. I mean, it was, there was no really, the theater department was not involved at all. I mean, only in a token sense, as they, we had an advisor, but we never saw him or talked to him or anything. I mean, wow, like what a huge blessing to sort of be given free reign, <laughs> more or less, of what this is, how to create it, how to just, I mean, build literally building it from the foundation up with, without grown-ups like hovering over and and micromanaging every decision that they made. It just, it, I don't recall that being an issue at all, which was lovely. I'm kind of I'm kind of a rare case. So I was in it when it was kind of still being formed, and so I, I was one of the. I, I I think it was maybe up or maybe a year or two before that, but. Um, you know, I, I, a lot of the original people were, were still there when I was there. And I actually was not in the improv troupe. I was only a host. Hi, uh, my name is James Best. I'm a playwright living in Brooklyn. You know, 250, 250 people came and we were very flattered and very excited. You know, we, we were playing shows like every week-ish and, and there was certainly a lot of demand. So, so it's not surprising that it's gone on this long, but it is kind of like, Wow, that's kind of cool that it's lasted. You know, it didn't like die and like get replaced with with some school mandated thing. It's it still survived after all this long. I'm J.D. Taylor. From the point of view in, of an actor, is there really a difference uh, between doing this ridiculous, unrealistic action movie full of robots and spaceships and guns and airplanes crashing and saying ridiculous lines like "get in the truck" and Equally pretending, for an actor, is there really a difference in those two things, and is one really greater than the other? For me, it was less about making the audience laugh and more about making the other guys and girls that we were, I was playing with laugh. That was, that was a real victory in my book. Because I had zero improv training, and this, this was it, this was my improv like boot camp, um, it was stressful for me. It was scary. I I didn't I didn't ever really feel like I could just jump in there with all the rest of them because they were so good at it. Like it just came so naturally to so many of them. I remember going to the audition uh, with a lot of people I already knew, and then uh, I was in the first show. So I uh, I was one of the original cast members. 
Uh, it was a lot of a lot of really fun, talented people. There was some drama behind the scenes, but the shows themselves were a pretty good time. It was a nice way to kind of cut loose and just have fun. When I first got back off a uh, Mormon mission from Baltimore, I had told myself, all right, time to put away childish things. No more uh, nonsense, no more like theater nonsense or, you know, I did a lot of theater growing up. My mom was like a, a theater teacher. And so I was, you know, but she was definitely of the mindset, very uh, strong opinion mother that I should not do any kind of artistic thing like, oh, I'm going to be a the I'm going to go on Broadway or anything like that. Like I would never have made it on Broadway anyway, but uh, she was very adamant about that. Like even like when I chose communications as a, a, a major, she was very much like, oh, don't, don't do that. You're not going to do that. I was extremely bored. I was making friends, you know, like through the regular channels you make at a Mormon school, like home evening. And they were really nice people and I liked them a lot, but you know, just didn't really hadn't found my tribe yet. So for on a whim, I was in a building that like the snow building, which I'd never like really had a reason to go to the snow building. And I saw an audition thing for Romeo and Juliet. And so I was like, oh, Romeo and Juliet. I've never done a Shakespeare play. I, that might be fun. I jumped right in and I wasn't expecting, like I, I kind of botched my audition, like in the middle of it. I like was, I had to read my lines because I was trying to do a, a monologue. And I really wanted to be Mercutio because I thought, oh, that'll be the fun role. Like that'll be like the the big role that, you know, you're, will, will show your comedic abilities. But I was literally like surprised if I was even gonna get in the play because I thought, oh, this is like a college. Like you're not doing community college anymore. So this is going to be probably a lot of talent. And there was a lot of talent, but there weren't a lot of guys. So I was definitely gonna get in the play no matter what I did. Even if I like read the lines in Spanish, they probably would have still taken me. I get in, I become one of the fathers, <laughs> one of the, was Montague, I was Lord Montague, who has like four lines in the whole play. I had more lines, but they cut him out. I was Mercutio, and he was like Lord Capulet or Lord Montague. I quickly realized at that point when they cast me as Montague that I was only gonna play old men the majority of my college career. Uh, John Gannion got cast as Mercutio, and I was like jealous at first, but we like met each other at the callback and he was a funny guy, I could tell immediately. I'm like, so I was like, I can't be, you know, mad at you, you're a great person. So we immediately started being, uh, you know, uh, bonding together. So I was in a series of plays at BYU-Idaho at the time. Uh, uh, I did storytelling in Men's Choir and then I was in Romeo and Juliet, uh, where it was a pretty big production. And uh, I, if I'm remembering correctly, Jeff and John met there, and uh, Jeff Blake and John Gagnon, and started the idea for Comic Frenzy. And there was uh, a lot of us in the cast, I think, that were interested. I knew that there was like no improv or no comedy going on there um, at the time. And I had done it all through high school and stuff. And so I knew Jeff was funny. And I think he had done something, like he had done something before, maybe. I actually had gone down to BYU proper in Provo. I was down there and uh, my brother was like, oh, I'm like, what should I do when I'm in? And they're like, oh, you should go to a Divine Comedy show. I went and watched it and it was hilarious. It was actually a lot funnier than I was expecting. Mission's letter says something about a uh, student ID card. Do you know what that is? Oh, blimey, Harry. Hillary. Hillary, whatever. <laughs> he 
have never heard of an ID card. Why, it's the most magical thing ever. Not only has it got your picture on it, but it lets you into the varsity theater. Oh, oh here we are at the info desk. Oh. Oh, excuse me, I'd like to... Oh. Ah, Hillary Potter. I've been expecting you. Here, try this. Tell me how that feels. Oh, well, just fine, but aren't all these cards the same shape and size? They are, but the factory that made this card only had enough ma magnetic striping for two cards. <laughs> only two. And its mate belongs to the man who gave you that scar. Ooh. Hagrid, how come everybody seems to know who I am? And, and why do they keep talking about my scar? You see, Hillary, once upon a time, there was a student here who was a huge BYU football fan. He loved the team so much that he changed his name to Lavelle DeMort. I'm President Cecil Dorr. This is Professor Snaperson. I'm Veronica Weasley. Most people call me Ronnie. Ooh. I play the guitar. I'm his Miney Granger. I am Draco Marriott. I'm a freshman too. I could be the key to the social scene for you. Shall I pick you up at eight? Don't go out with him. He's evil. You must be a Weasley. The red hair and the guitar case give it away. Plus you're wearing that name tag that says Weasley on it. What do you know about dating? It's not like you've ever been on one. Sorry, but I don't go out with boys unless they ask me out in a creative way involving balloons and, and a live chicken. It was really well done, you know, uh, so I was surprised at that. So I was like, my brother was like, I'm like, I'm so bored. And my brother was like, well, you should do a comedy troupe up at BYU-Idaho. Do they even have a comedy troupe? And I'm like, I don't, I don't think they do, uh, which was very surprising to me. And so I was still in Romeo and Juliet at that time. I went back and I was like in this dressing room area downstairs. Um, we found a dead bat down there one time. So it was kind of a creepy dressing room, but that just setting the scene. And I was talking to John. I'm like, hey, uh, we should do a comedy troupe. Uh, and he was like, oh, that's a great idea. And then I can't remember how much time after I told him that elapsed, but he was like, improv is super fun and he was he was very much like uh we should do an improv troupe and at first like i have the kind of brain where if i get my mind set on something i'm like well, yeah that does sound fun except i've never done improv before and uh you know i really maybe sketch would be more fun within like a few days i was like eh, that that sounds actually like it would be more successful and more fun i can't remember exactly how we did it. But yeah, I'm like, let's do it. You know, it's amazing that like of all the ideas I've ever brought up with a friend or anything like this one actually came to fruition. And so then we broke for like for Christmas break. And uh, when we came back, started putting things together. Um, at the at that time, we were just like, like a like the comedy group. This was the one time I think I was having so much fun in the theater experience with John that we were like, or maybe it was just John. Maybe that's it, because he actually is a person who follows through. So that's probably what happened. Which itself was kind of weird, because people thought it was just like a comedy club, like, let's come in and have a club about comedy or something, you know what I mean? Like, I guess we'll just talk about, like, maybe watch stand-up or something like that. And so there are some people who, when we were like, oh, no, if there's going to be auditions, they were kind of turned off. So I uh, was good friends with Jeff Blake. Um, prior to going to um, BYU-Idaho, uh, we had, had served uh, on a, our missions, our LDS mission, together as companions. So we lived together for, I think we were together for like a month and a half or so. And uh, we got to be close there and we, you know, uh, like to joke around a lot. <laughs> and uh, so when uh, we were both at BYU-Idaho, um, you know, we'd see each other occasionally. Um, and one, one of the times he'd mentioned to me that he and a friend of his were going to be putting together a improv comedy troupe. And, uh, and I kind of, you know, at the time I was, uh, I think I was a accounting major or a business major or something. And I was like, kind of thinking, nah, <laughs> not really interested. I'll pass, uh, trying to take myself more seriously, I guess. We went to the school 
board, like the student activities council, and we're like, hey, let's let's do. Uh, can we? We want to do a a comedy show, an improv show, and they were like, oh, great. We decided to do a show, like a little teaser to announce auditions. And so we went to the worst possible place. It was in the middle of a dance. All these students were in the man wearing center and they were like, hey, we're gonna stop the dance where everyone's having fun and we're gonna do a comedy show for like 20 minutes or something. And I, I had never even like rehearsed improv at that point. John and I were like, Going back and forth. Turns out I had been doing improv for years and I just had never put the label on it that we were doing improv. I loved Whose Line Is It Anyway. And I would always play party quirks with my friends. So we, we did that all the time and I had been doing it for years and being a dork obviously for years and not remembering my lines and plays. And so I had to improvise, you know, like new lines to make what I missed make sense. So I've been doing improv for a long time, but I had never performed improv, so I'm in front of like a thousand people at a dance. They stop the dance. <laughs> They're like, now we're going to do some comedy. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is this is a bad idea. And there was this guy, this wonderful guy, Khalifi, who joined us, who was like one of the student uh, activity people who was like really popular. And so the, he'll be great. He'll join us. And then um, we got this kid, Todd, to join us. And it was just four of us doing improv, and it was very awkward. We didn't really know what we were doing yet. I think it was James who did it. And James was like, hey, you, we got to go do this thing. I said, what is it? He's like, oh, it's this comic. They're trying to do this improv group. And of course, we didn't have the name at the time. Um, and I remember um, I remember walking from James's apartment, and we're just heading over to, um, yeah, I think it probably was the Man Murray building. That, that, I think that's exactly what it was. Um, and so I, I didn't know the name was like some sort of, you know, comic frenzy preview. Of course, again, we, we didn't have the name at the time. It was just a improv group. And we get to the end and like we go outside and we're like, well, that was weird. I mean, there were some laughs. It wasn't horrible, but uh, we're like, we're having auditions. So come join us. Then they said, OK, that was us. We're going to go start a comedy group. And when I was in the hallway, they were there. I said. What's up, guys? You guys did great. Tough crowd, though. Tough crowd. So John and Jeff, they need me. And they told me, you're real cool. You're a cool guy. So without me knowing, my friend Khalifi signed us both up to audition. I was like, no, I didn't think they were that funny. And then this guy James comes up, uh, James Best, and he's like, hey, that was really good. You know, like, you guys, uh, that was fun. Like, you, you, like, he was very much trying to be, like, a nice guy to us. Like, I, I think he was not impressed, I'm sure, at our improv skills at all. But he definitely came up and was very charming and very, like, nice. And we're like, oh, he's a cool guy. I, I bet he's funny. And, like, basically at that point, I had locked in my head. Maybe John had to. I'm like, he's going to be in the troop. We're just going to, you know, he's, we're just going to put him in the troop. Um, and then Bryce Cranmer, who is one of the original people as well, came up to us with James. They were friends. I think they were in the same ward or something. And, uh, they, they both started talking to us and we're, and Bryce seemed funny. So we were like, oh yeah, he'll, he'll probably be in the group as well. So they, they, they like schmoozed us, like schmoozed their way into the group basically. I'd never really done any Im improv besides really horrible stuff in high school, you know, where we never knew what, what we were doing when we didn't quite know what we were doing when we first started Comic Frenzy either. But um, yeah, so it was really Jeff and John's brainchild. So yeah, like, I mean, I kind of just followed the format of like my high school improv groups uh, for our auditions. Auditions were amazing. We had too many people to choose. Had a lot of funny people. Bryce and James both came and we were like, oh, these guys are in, they're cool, they like us. So, and they were both handsome. So we were like, oh, we gotta have you know, some good looking people in the troupe. So the, Sarah Alsop was there. Um, she was hilarious just with her like dry, she had kind of this dry Midwestern wit about her that was amazing and made a big impression on me. Sarah was the funniest person from the original cast. She was deadpan and every line that she came up with made me laugh my head off. I remember her just stunning me with laughter so many times. She was amazing. You know, I'm a I'm a pretty modest 
unassuming person. <laughs> and I'm also pretty shy. And uh, so I just kind of like came in and hung to the back. And then I did my audition and I, I didn't think I did very well. And I'm, you know, humble, I'm a humble, modest person. Um, so I was actually really surprised that I made the team. And then I talked to Jeff and James about it later and they're like, oh no, we really liked you. Like from the very first instant that you started, we thought you were great and wanted to be on the, and we wanted you on the team. And I was like, oh man, I thought I did terrible. And I was sure you weren't going to put me on the team. I am holding auditions for an improv troupe. And thank goodness John is here because I have never, you know, I know it's funny, but I was like, why am I doing this? Why am I the arbiter of good taste when I don't, you know, I've never done improv in my life. I was sitting in the man wearing with some girls that were a part of an activity group that we got together once a week. And I was talking to them and John Gagnon, who was an original founder, came up and started flirting with them. He denies this, but he started flirting with them and I said, oh, what are you doing? And he was kind of annoyed that me, the boy, was talking to him and said, oh, I'm doing an improv group. And I'm like, oh, that sounds great. And he gave me the information. I thought, oh, we'll see if I go and decided to go and auditioned. I was involved in theater in high school and really my whole life, my mom was in theater. So I said, oh, that sounds like fun. Went and gave it a shot and happened to make it. And then, yeah, we just played a, a bunch of different uh, little kind of stand up pop out games um, and uh, and I don't remember if it was that day or the next day. We basically got a, hey, you're in. Let's do it. So James and myself were in. I know John Gagnon was there. Um, and John and Jeff were kind of the two that, you know, put it together. Like Jeff and I were like the leaders. I was the one. And that, cause now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know how much like improv specific experience Jeff had. But like, um, so I was kind of like teaching everybody the games. I think Ben Parks. Um, had some improv experience, so he was so he would kind of help out. Like he kind of knew what I was talking about. It was my very first semester at BYU Idaho, and I actually was um, considering transferring because I didn't love it. Um, but I was kind of looking for a reason to stay, and so I saw the posters advertising the auditions, and improv was something that I had done you know, in high school a little bit and something I thought would be super fun. And in fact, like I talked about starting an improv troupe of my own somewhere. I, I say talked about, talked about it to myself. I had never shared this idea with anyone, I don't think. But, um, but I thought it was something that, that could be fun and useful. So yeah, I saw the, the audition poster. I didn't know anybody um, there. Uh, it was prior to me really getting involved in the theater department because I had gone, I started school like mid semester. I don't know if they still do this weird thing where it's like you can start halfway through the semester, but that's what I did. Uh, cause I had gotten home from my mission too late to attend the full semester. So I started mid semester, which means all of my classes were generals. So I didn't have any, I didn't know anybody in the theater department yet. So I just walked in the door uh, with not much context or knowledge of anyone and, and auditioned. Because we had done Romeo and Juliet and we had like made some good friends there, there were a lot of people who came from Romeo and Juliet who we were like, oh yeah, that'd be great. Like uh, Patrice Stratty um, was one of the original people. Patrice is hilarious. Some of the most funny, unintentionally funny moments uh, came from Patrice. They set it up, they started it, and I was um, working on a different play and just had a couple minutes off to run in and do an improv thing with them. And based on that, by playing a game or two, um, I was cast, um, which was fun, but I really didn't know what I was doing. And, and, and yeah, but it was fun. We had a great, great time. Trevor was hilarious, but he didn't really come to auditions. He just kind of came for a second, and then we're like, oh man, he's so funny. And then he left, and we're like, he didn't really come, but we just should just cast him. They were formulating Comic Frenzy. Of course, it was Jeff 
Jeff Blake and John Gannon's brainchild. And for some reason, Jeff didn't want me. This is the word I got. Jeff didn't want me on the team for whatever reason. Some say jealousy. I don't know. I don't know. Do I understand the frustration? Absolutely. Like, and everything when you're 23, 22 is like very dramatic, you know, especially with theater people. So whatever the reason was, you look back and you go, man, we were so young. We were so young. And whatever those, whatever we were feeling, whatever, it seems so long ago and so childish, you know? But we, I think there was a threatening on, on, I think everybody felt a little threatened by everybody. And I think that was what pushed us to be the best that we, that we were. Right. I, I was the voice, so I would sit up in the box and I would do the announcement. Like, you know, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Comic Frenzy. And everybody come in. So that's how I started. And then... Uh, two semesters into it, I was like, screw this. Like, what the heck? I want to be a part of the team, you know? Like, an actual part of the team. And so it was James Best, who I've always... He, I love James. And it was James, really, that fought for me to be on the team. You know, there's, there's like, a lot of experimentation. Like, we had Christian Busey. Like, he was, like, like, the voice. Like, he was up in the booth. Our announcer. Which was stupid, because we should have put Christian in the group from the beginning. Uh, and then he just ended up like we're like he's too funny like he needs to be like on the team. We formed the troop. We we were like, what should we do for our name? Like, cause we were, we like scheduled the performance. Yeah, so we uh, we got to sit upstairs. We were sitting upstairs and we were trying to figure out like how do we name ourselves? Um, you know, and I wish I I would have remembered all of the names. Um, you know, I, I, and I can, I know they were all just wacky ones from Comedy Stampede, you know, Tickle Giggles or, you know, the Giggle Parade or the, you know, the Laugh, the Laugh, not Laugh Factory. The Laugh Hut. Um, and then I just remember, um, I think we decided on Comedy Sports. And we're like, oh, that's a really good name. Oh, wow. We are geniuses. And we like decided on it. Meeting finished. And then I remember like at the next meeting or something, James was like, oh, actually we realized comedy sports is like a giant thing that's already done. And one of us must have heard it somewhere and said it. So actually we're going to be Comic Frenzy. I don't know actually who came up with the name Comic Frenzy. It just, we did go through a ton of names. We were upstairs for quite some time just trying to debate on what we call ourselves. And just like made the unilateral decision. And I was like, did we ever decide on comic front? Did anyone suggest? Okay, whatever. I don't care. Jeff and I were just back in my apartment, I think, and we were like, hey, let's just call it Comic Frenzy. <laughs> so we had this democratic <laughs> solution to come up with the name, and we just like, you know, we just got rid of all of that, and we're just like, oh, we'll just call it Comic Frenzy. <laughs> that sounds fun. Like, like us leading and teaching others is a very loose concept. I feel like it was a lot of everybody who was there just being really kind of scrappy and bringing what they had to the table and, and thinking through, um, you know, what can I bring? Um, I, I do think that John and I probably had the most experience, but um, everyone had an idea or a take on what we should do or different things. Um, I will say though, the, the fun thing about the, I remember going to the audition and doing the audition and feeling pretty confident about it. Uh, but the only feedback that I got from Jeff and John at the audition uh, afterwards is everyone's kind of like leaving. And then Jeff comes up to me like just deadpan face, almost looked like he was angry. And he goes, hey, you're really funny. And I just thought that was a funny bit of feedback because I was like, oh, OK. Um, but like I remember James always having really great ideas, even though he hadn't had a lot of improv experience. And we were just kind of trying to figure out how to do it. I remember when it started, um, none of us really knew what it was or what it was going to be. You know, and that's hard to find because I mean, we were we were neophyte, untrained comedians. We were, uh, I think for the most part, we were all, you know, Mormon kids from small towns who thought we had a lot of talent. 
<laughs> and uh, you come to a university and, uh, you know, kind of share in this together. Uh, it was a really fun group of people, some, some complicated personalities, but I think, you know, largely we were untrained. Um, but I remember our first rehearsal. Like I said, I hadn't really done improv and I got stuck and I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I just started doing a Chris Farley impression. And I'm like, I am the world's biggest hack. I know this is bad. This isn't funny. I wasn't fully sure it was going to work. And like, you know, there was always a lot of big talk of, yeah, we'll do shows and people will come. And I was always like, yeah, okay, let's just, let's just play around. Let's just have some fun. Um, but I remember uh, we were having a rehearsal. We at the, in the early days, the first, the first semester we ever met, we were, we would meet up, in the like on the third level of the Kirkham, like up above, the the two theaters that were there, in this little dingy room. I remember we were playing forward and re reverse, and I was it was Jeff and myself and one other person I can't remember now who, who it was, might have been James Best. But we were we were playing, and. We started doing the, the forward and, and, and the and the reverse and it like it sort of like, it kinda clicked like oh this is this is gonna work. This is this is a lot of fun and we as a team are like we have good chemistry or whatever. Um, this this could this is gonna be a lot of fun. That was one of the first memories of like, wow, okay, we made everybody in here laugh and that was a lot of fun. I felt like we were connected, we understood what the game was and, and anyway, it was like one of those aha moments. There was a lot of, you know, we're, we're talking post-mission or pre-mission, you know, young men who uh, have not really figured out much of the world yet, and uh, just a very small handful of girls. Uh, but it was it was a big rush. It was, it was a fun time. I remember having a really good time at those shows. Oh, I remember something else extremely controversial. We didn't even know. We just had, we're gonna hold the show, and we're like, well, what do we do for, like, tickets? We didn't even like clear it with the school or anything. We just made sure that like the Kirkham was open. We may have even like, like, we may have like taped, I don't know if it was this time, but we may have like taped one of the doors to stay open so that we could open it like with duct tape, you know, like so that it wouldn't like lock when it's shut. And so that. So we just, we just took money, which is totally a no no. Uh, and I think we made like, Six hundred dollars. <laughs> like we were literally, like we literally had like, like a like a metal box that we bought from Walmart, taking people's, taking people's money, and like we had like a roll of tickets that we were handing out. Like we didn't know any better. And we just took the money, and they were like, the student council was like, uh, what, what did you do with the money? And we're like, oh, we just have it in this box. First of all, tell us that they don't think, uh, they don't think comedy is appropriate at the at the Lord's University, and then two to tell us. You know that uh, you know they don't want to lose their tax exempt status by having for profit activities. And we gave it to them, and they're like, "That is not cool. You need to get specific ticket takers." And then, oddly enough, you'd had some um, uh, like the ticket ladies at the you know at the box office were pretty upset too because you know we took their little piece of power that they tended to so so well. So they're pretty upset about that. That was our weird moment, but we were so young and naive, we were like, here's the money. It's not like we like went, ran away to Mexico or anything, so. The logo I developed, I designed with, um... Got him bored. <laughs> we're sitting in Elders Quorum or church or whatever it was, and we just said, I'm like, hey, let's try to make something kind of funny and goofy with it. He knew that I was uh, an art major. I was doing graphic design, illustration, stuff like that. So he leaned over and he was like, hey, do you think you could like help us to come up with a logo for Comic Frenzy. And I was like, all right, sure. Uh, when do you need it by? And he's like, well, can you drop some right now? And I was like, right now in the Elders Quorum? He's like, yeah, right now. And I was like, okay. So for the next like 15 minutes, I drew up some stuff. And I said, I, I think it'd be fun if we just made it like into a smiley face. If you turn it one way, it's, it's a smiley face. All of a sudden I drew the CNF as like a smiley face. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it like hit me, I was like, that's it. And so he's the one who did. He, he did the C and then the F that wasn't totally connected for the nose and then the two eyes. Um, and I said, that's it. That There's CF for Comic Frenzy. That's 
what it is. It's brilliant, you know, smiley face, comedy, haha. Uh, so I showed Bryce, and he's like, yeah, that's great, I love it. Um, can you draw it up on the computer? So I spent a couple days, drew it up, tweaked it, showed everyone a comic frenzy. They all loved it. I put on the shirt. That's it. That's the story of the logo, how it came to be. The, the last show of our very first semester, we were doing this kind of big blowout show, closing out the semester. Everything had been going well, so we were kind of on this high. And at the intermission for that show, I was like, hey guys, I've got a great idea. Since it's our last show, why don't we end the show by singing the song So Long, Farewell, Goodbye from The Sound of Music, but we'll change the words and we'll, we'll improv this version of the song we thought we were so clever we did like a like a spoof of um of sound of music and it was a disaster like from start to finish because we hadn't even ventured into the realm of musical games at that point really and not everybody knew the song and people were singing verses in different keys than each other and it was just about four minutes. And it took like 10 minutes for us to get off the stage instead, <laughs> instead, of just ending, instead of just ending the show and leaving. Bewilderment from the audience with no laughter at all. And that's how we ended our very last show of our first semester. Yeah, it was just, it was like, you know, we were pretty popular pretty fast. Um, and um, I, like, I think I think we were pretty surprised um, how well it went. Like, I remember always being nervous uh, before going out um, just because it, like, it, it was like an anxiety, like just like an, I was so amped up to go and, and perform. So at the beginning, I think it was just me and Patrice. But I actually remember like being very annoyed with Patrice because she would never come to practice. She very rarely came to practice. But when we had shows, it was really important that she was there because we didn't want to have, you know, 11 boys and one girl, right? So whenever there was a show, we would say, yes, 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 Patrice, please come, please come. And then she'd come and she didn't know how to do any of the games. And it was a little bit annoying. I can be a good leader if I have the proper like administration to like back me up. Like it took me a very long time to realize like you can have great ideas, but if you can't keep organized, then you're basically, it doesn't matter how good of a leader you are. And so after the first year, J James was like very heavily involved um, with me trying to keep things organized. Um, but I, there's no drama for me because I'm a horrible, I'm a horribly organ unorganized, disorganized person. I was a, a very closeted, shy, young, gay Mormon kid back then who was so desperate to fit in with people and make friends but also so afraid of letting people get to know me because then they would know this like secret that I was carrying. And so I, I don't know how people experienced me back then, but I was like very brave and bold and happy, but also like very, very shy and kept everyone at arm's length to try to avoid any type of, uh, you know, exposure because there was all this internal conflict going on. Um, so I remember those times, like uh, I did a lot of theater in high school and then I did the mission. And then at, at BYUI, I was in a lot of different groups and shows, partly because I love performing and storytelling, but also partly because if I could keep myself busy, it gave me an automatic friend network, but also like I didn't have a lot of solo time to think about the conflicts I was facing. Um, so it was an interesting couple of years. And I, as if I, I, I haven't followed up with everyone, but I think probably from that original cast, I was probably the only closeted kid. Uh, although I imagine there have been multiple since then, because, you know, it's BYU-Idaho, and <laughs> that's, that's what happens. It sounds so, like, egotistical, like, coming out of my mouth, but, like, for, like, BYU-Idaho, which had just been Rick's College and then just turned into university, it was, like, so, like, kind of radical, like, 
the way that they like literally like I was in an administrator's office and they and he was just like talking about how comedy is like you know it like disrupts the spirit and stuff like that and I'm like that's that's so stupid I mean we ran into a lot of roadblocks as you can imagine a pretty conservative university and this new group wanting to do comedy which typically doesn't coincide with a religious institution. Um, there were there were some setbacks at the beginning. They're like, oh, we kind of just floated around. We were initially kind of under student activities. So there were some issues at the beginning. I, I know that Jeff and John could probably talk a little bit more about that because they were the ones in the meetings and getting yelled at by people. Scrutiny was kind of placed on us because BYO activities didn't like that, um, that we were not open for everybody. We're going to, you know, we're going to cancel Comic Frenzy. It was interesting and we kind of laugh about some of it now, but I, I mean, it was pretty groundbreaking to establish this group and the things we were able to do, um, but then to see the roughness of it. Sometimes we would get a call and it would be like, you know, James or Jeff and they'd be like, hey, we've got a space in two days on Friday. Let's try and do a show. Uh, okay. And then other times it would be like, okay, so we have a show in three months. And, and like me and a friend, we'd go like apartment building to apartment building door by door and like hand out little uh, invitation flyers. And so sometimes it was just really organized ahead of schedule. And sometimes it was just like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. We did form under student activities, I think, our faculty sponsor was John's uncle or something, and the only reason that was the case is because, like, John knew that his uncle was a professor and literally had nothing to do with us at all. My uncle was the advisor, the faculty advisor. He just, I mean, he just literally, like, signed the form or whatever he needed to do, and, and that was it. Like, he never came to any of the practices. I don't even think he came to a show. I don't remember exactly what happened, but we had some sort of falling out or disconnect with the activities, um, with activities, and that they didn't want us to be a thing anymore. And um, essentially dropped our approval to be a, a, a club on campus. Um, at the time as counter what they're trying to accomplish as BYU activities. And so a lot of, so that went on, that, that tension went on for a little bit until they uh, decided that it just wasn't gonna work out. One of the most popular groups on campus, Comic Frenzy, recently performed four shows for nearly sold out crowds. I went to see what the frenzy for Comic Frenzy is all about. There's a lot of bratty kids out there. I'm not Over the past three years, the comedy group Comic Frenzy has entertained thousands of BYU-Idaho students. Every few weeks, the group gets together and puts on audience participation improv comedy shows with one goal in mind, to make people laugh. I love to hear the audience laughing. I think that's the biggest gratification is, is knowing that people come here, you know, they have a hard day at, at school, but they come here to unload. Comic Frenzy began doing shows in the fall of 2002. The group's founders, John Gagnon and Jeff Blake, were in a play together and both thought that BYU-Idaho needed an improv group. So at the end of the show, we were sitting in the dressing room, actually, and when we both came up to each other at the same time, we were thinking, hey, do you want to start an improv troupe? We both had the same question for each other. So posters were made, tryouts were held, and a cast was put together. Meanwhile, Gagnon left on an LDS church mission to Italy, and when he returned to BYU-Idaho, he was shocked at how big Comic Frenzy had become. And then coming back and just to see that almost everyone you talked to had heard of Comic Frenzy, it was... It's pretty neat. A lot of people think that Comic Frenzy only happens on the weekend, but every Tuesday and Thursday night, these guys are here practicing improv skills. We meet uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 until 7 and basically just play the games. We just play to make each other laugh. We try and uh, talk about the different skills of improv because you don't script anything, you don't write anything, but you need to be able to trust each other. So the next time you have a free weekend and need a good laugh, check out Comic Frenzy. Reporting for BYU-Idaho. He's Nate Eaton. 
No. Comic Frenzy's last show for the semester will be on April 15th and 16th in the Kirkham Arena.